All right, let's look at notes for 9.8, power series, Taylor and Maclaurin series. Now, if x is a variable, then an infinite series will have the form a sub n x to the n is equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 1 x sub 1 plus a sub 2 x sub 2, so on and so forth until we get a sub n x to the n. a sub n is a rule of sequence that generates uh, the coefficients. And we call this a power series simply because we're dealing with powers of um, dealing with powers of x to the n. Okay, uh, a series is a polynomial with infinitely many terms, and here we see that this is going to be an expression that represents a power series that is centered at of the value c, and c is a constant. Uh, the Taylor and Maclaurin series, which we're going to talk about, uh, are special cases of power series. Uh, Maclaurin series centered at, is always centered at x equals 0. Taylor series is more, more flexible. It can be centered at values other than x equals 0. The equal sign above here um, means that the left side, this original equation, this original function, um, is equal to the right side for all values in the domain. This means that the above is an identity, but for what values of x does this identity hold, we have to find them. Okay, For all such x values, we say that the series converge, and its converging series is simply where a function and the series are exactly the same, that they share the same values. Okay, so for what values of x, uh, for which the identity is not true, we say that the series diverge. Okay, so for a power series that's centered at C, uh, that represents a function f of x, precisely one of the following is true. So a power series is something that tries to mirror um, uh, the, uh, uh, the original function. However, it's not always that the power series will match up exactly uh, with the original function everywhere. So we have three conditions here. Uh, sometimes uh, the series converge only at the center. So no other values does the power series match with the, uh, uh, with the function except at C. And uh, a quick example of that could be a tangent line, right? A tangent line uh, to a curve will only match exactly with the center uh, the point of tangency. Any other point, uh, the graph is not going to match uh, with the tangent line. So all power series converges at their center no matter what. Okay. Uh, the second option is where the series converges for all x. And this is where the function and the infinite series will have the exact same values everywhere. Uh, and the third uh, possibility is there exists a radius that's greater than 0, such that the series converges for x minus c is less than r and diverges for x minus c is greater than r. So that means that this series will converge everywhere, but only within a certain radius, within a certain set of values. r is called the radius convergence of the power series. <laughs> in part 1, in this first um, example here, possibility, the radius is 0. For part two, because the series converges everywhere, the radius is infinity. In part three, um, the corresponding domain uh, will be c minus r being the lower bound and c plus r being the upper bound. So the series will converge for a set of values between the lower and upper bound. To find the lower bound, we take the center and we subtract the radius. And then to find the upper bound, we start from the center and we add the radius. So this is called the interval of convergence. Um, however, we have to also consider the fact that the endpoints may or may not converge. And because it may or may not converge, we have to separately test the endpoints. So if you see the bracket and parentheses, that just means that we have to choose between either of these. Okay, so this is kind of a reminder that we have to decide uh, if the endpoint, if this left endpoint doesn't converge, we have to use the parentheses. 
If this endpoint does converge, we use a bracket. All right, to determine if endpoints are included or not, we must test each endpoint independently. And we typically use the ratio test to determine if uh, what the radius of convergence is. Um, the reason why we're dealing with power series and power series, um, and, um, all, they always have exponents. And ratio tests um, uh, are are going to be it's going to be a, are going to be good fits uh, for uh, ones that deal with exponents. All right, there's a couple of uh, cases before we look at example one. Uh, an example of case number two, the series converges for all x. An example of that would be the sine of x. So uh, sine of x can be represented by this power series, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over fa factorial minus x to the seventh fa over 7 factorial, so on and so forth, as long as we keep on with these patterns. So as long as we keep increasing, as long as we um, add infinite number of terms following this pattern, this polynomial will match exactly with this sine curve. So if you were to graph this in the calculator, and if you were to graph the sine of x curve, uh, we're going to see that this is going to um, um, match exactly with the curvature of the sine graph. So in theory, these are one and the same. However, there are cases. Um, this is an example of case three, where there's no way for a polynomial to match with um, uh, the given function. An example of that would be a function, a rational function that has asymptotes. So here we have an asymptote at x equals negative one, at x equals one, at h, uh, at uh, horizontal asymptote at y is equal to one. And we see that there's no way for this polynomial to be able to match exactly um, to the shape and to the characteristic of this uh, rational function simply because we have vertical asymptotes. Right? There's no way for a polynomial to, uh, uh, to match the, sh the, uh, the characteristic of, uh, of an asymptote because it doesn't have one. So what that means is that even though this polynomial is not going to is not going to be a perfect fit uh, for this uh, rational function. It is a perfect. F it could be a perfect fit for uh, a range of values, or for an interval, uh, or for values within a certain interval. So here we see that um, in this case, this polynomial is going to match exactly um, with the rational function as long as we're looking at values between negative one and one. So between negative one and one. Uh, we see there's going to be a perfect fit between the graph and the, um, the polynomial. So here we can say that the center is at 0, but the radius is, uh, is 1 because it extends to the left and to the right of the center one unit. Okay, so those are some, as a visual example of, of when we have an interval of convergence uh, between a function and a polynomial. All right, example 1. Find the nth term for the power series, f of x equals e to the x. Then find the radius and interval of convergence for the representative power series. So here we have e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. So uh, this is the power series for e to the x plus dot, dot, dot. And our rule of sequence is given by x to the n over n factorial. Now we could write it as x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial, but usually we choose the simpler form of the series. Uh, and we um, uh, many times we have to kind of play around with the starting n value to determine which will come out to be the cleaner or the simpler rule of sequence. All right, we're going to now use the ratio test uh, to find the radius convergence. Now, the ratio test, uh, just to remind you, looks like this. It's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And as long as this expression is less than 1, we know that the series will converge. Now, a sub n plus 1 is simply uh, um, taking the rule of sequence and replacing all the n's with n plus 1, and we divide it by a sub n. Now, um, 
rather than dividing by a complex fraction or dividing by a fraction and making this complex fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal so that um, it will be easier to decide how to reduce and simplify and cancel out. All right, so a sub n plus 1, we're going to take the rule of sequence, replace all the n's with n plus 1, and so here's my a sub n plus 1, divided by a sub n. My a sub n is my original rule of sequence, but rather than dividing by x sub n over n plus n factorial, I can take the next step to multiply by the reciprocal, and I flip uh, those two uh, values, make it n factorial over x to the n. Now here, we can begin to cancel out x to the n's will cancel out, leaving us with just x. n factorial over n plus 1 factorial uh, will reduce to be just n plus 1 in the denominator. Now, as long as this expression is less than 1, we know that uh, our series will converge. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if we can make, make headway here. As n approaches infinity, n plus 1, this, this is going to uh, keep increasing to infinity which means that our fraction will keep uh, getting smaller and smaller. Now x is just a constant. It's a static value. It's not going to change. So no matter how large x is, the n plus 1 uh, will keep increasing until it overtakes it. And then this fraction will get closer and closer to 0. And 0 is always less than 1, which means that this condition will always be satisfied, uh, which means that our radius is going to be infinity there's going to be infinite number of values that will allow um, this series to converge. So that means this is a perfect fit. Our interval is from negative infinity to positive infinity centered at zero. Okay, so this shows that e, this, this uh, function e to the x has an, has an infinite polynomial series that matches and represents it perfectly.